And hello again, and today we're going to have a look, another look, at the uh, Icon P1 Nano. Um, I think I did a video, I think it was probably Friday, um, and I said I'd um, come back to it after the weekend and have a look at this area here. Now, over the weekend, um, I've tried to spend my spare time seeing what I could do with the script backend and the uh, labelling um, to get as far as I can within that fairly short space of time um, to where I'd like to be uh, with this control surface. So that's what I'm going to show you now. Um, there's some good things, there's some bad things. Uh, I've discovered a few things. Um, the picture on the left there that you're looking at is from the user manual, and obviously on the right is my video. They, they look like they're almost different um, different devices, but they're not. Um, it's very difficult with the lighting to to get it so that you have any chance at all of reading the displays um, on the actual control surface. Um, I probably need to get a better camera. This is the manual. Um, let's just make that. Um, and I, I, I thought I'd bring this up because there's a lot of information in here. So if you are thinking of getting um, hold of this uh, control surface, it's probably worth downloading this. And I'll put the link to download uh, the manual, um, which is obviously free. Um, and you can do so before you buy the control surface to see whether it suits you. And there's, a lot of, there's some specific information about all the different doors um, that are supported. So um, you don't necessarily have to have FL Studio. Um, but if you do, that's really what today is probably uh, more about. Anyway, um, let's close that down. And let's get stuck into to this area here. Now what I've done, there are five different sets of buttons. And you can have whatever you want on there, pretty much, provided there's some kind of back-end support for it. Um, this is, over the weekend, I, I'm kind of thinking, well, what, you know, what's the real stuff that I use most of the time? Now, this isn't perfect. This is a bit of a compromise between what I want and what is available. Um, but by and large, um, this is would be my personal set out today. Might be different next week, might be different the week after, but um, this is from the weekend and it's what I've been able to put together. So I, and I'll demonstrate it as we go along here as far as I can and I'll comment on some of the issues um, that I've come across. Oh, one thing I've discovered um, over the weekend is there is a third line which you can just see here of text that we have control over. Now, great, and that, that that's nice because um, it's not limited to seven characters. Unfortunately, it's not done with a proportional font, which means it's very difficult to line up text between each of these uh, boxes. Um, what would be nice is if there was some way of getting a proportional font, um, it would give us a bit more opportunity um, from an ergonomics and, and look perspective to tidy things up a bit. I've had a go as best I can, but you can see right there it says master volume and then in track three is the E from volume and then 30% um, master track volume, uh, which obviously I can change. Um, oh, I'm, I've actually got the kick selected now. That's looking a little bit better. When I go back on the master volume, um, you can see the E is actually not really where you want it to be. You want that to be in what is looking at track two there. Um, those are the kind of issues that I've had. I've spent a little bit of time charging stuff up, but what I really want to do is um, have a chat with Icon and see if there's any way of getting uh, a, you know, some kind of SysX to change that font to a proportional font or some other way of lining it up. Um, not the end of the world, but it's 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 nicer when it all looks tidy, I think. Um, and words aren't split up across the boxes, but maybe um, Maybe you won't be bothered about that, and maybe I shouldn't be bothered about it either. But um, I think if there is an opportunity with a proportional font, um, that would be a good way to go. And I say proportional font, what I really mean is a fixed number of characters per per display, which a proportional font would give us. OK, um, so, so I've started blabbing a bit there already. Let's get stuck in. So along the top row here, I've got things I want to select. Windows in FL Studio I want to select. Playlist. I want to be able to have that on and off. Mixer, on and off. Um, browser, on and off. Um, channel rack, same. And the uh, piano roll. So those are the windows I use the most. Oh, and the other one I've got on here, because I'm a developer, really, that's my background. 
um, is a script output window um, where uh, I think I mentioned this the other day you can get all sorts of control codes coming out and I've got them formatted a bit better there on that display there um, and I might touch on that as we go along um, after piano roll here in the middle I've got mute slash rec all off now I think that mute slash rec all off was one of the free functions I showed you in the last video and I've um, adapted it so that as well as being able to um, turn all the mute muted tracks wherever they may be on the across the mixer off um, you can also do the same with all the um, tracks that are set up for record so um, let's do that now um, I'll quickly select some tracks and uh, let's set them up to record so that's track one that's track two that's track three I don't know if you can see but I'm getting a red light here as I select them and you also see on the uh, over there we there. <laughs> I'm looking in the wrong direction. My my um my camera is actually uh, left to right instead of right to left. Um, anyway, before I, I lose track of where I am, let's do some more. Uh, what I was trying to say is that you should see them appearing on the mixer. And then when I do a shift and that button, abracadabra, they all gone. Actually, I couldn't think of what the word was. Abracadabra, yeah. Um, so mixer colors i think i showed you the other day i i did fiddle around i thought some um, people do want to have um, primary colors especially when they're being linked to a display and i think in fact i'm i'm almost 100 percent sure that the last line along here will give you the colors and will match up with fl studio colors if i can get enough time to script it i've kind of made a i made a start but I time boxed myself over the weekend and I'm being quite strict because I've got a lot of, a lot of other things um, I want to do uh, which aren't particularly related to um, to this control surface. Um, too much, too many things to do, too, too little time. Um, and I lose track. If I talk too much, I just lose track of where I am. So um, that's the mute and record all off. Uh, mix of colours. Yeah, that's where I actually was. Um, so primary colors on the shift and you can flick through just sets of primary colors um, script output window I showed you um, we're in panning mode at the moment so um, effectively we can pan left and right I've tidied up the display a little bit because all the stuff that was coming up on this third row um, it's kind of a bit gobbledygooky and I think there's enough information coming at you as a result of the left and right sliders and it's probably not very clear to you there but as i go left as i go right rather it goes to the right and as i turn to the left it turns to the left so you don't need to look at your um uh monitor and um, you've got that information um the other thing i did do was i put the decibel reading for volumes on any of the tracks so my hat volume uh symbols volume okay um free mode i don't think really many people use free mode but it's an opportunity if you're using um i don't know maybe an external synthesizer and you want to control some of the parameters on it um you can set them up in here and i put i gave you a few different options there so blank parameters uh synology style parameters generic parameters um and common parameters but basically you can't have anything you want in there i just um that was the first those are the things that came uh, off the top of my head um eqs uh this relates to the fl studio eq on the mixer to the right of the mixer so just in the middle of the screen at the bottom more or less and uh, so if we start fiddling you'll see the um the the wave shape of the um eq changing um, as relevant to whichever is set up here and they are changing you probably can't see them that first one was the most most, most noticeable i think wasn't it so you've got control over the basic eq for every track um, with that effects not used that much let's go to a track with a bit more, a few more effects on it and i'll take a shortcut to track 12 because it has um what well, how many there's eight there at least isn't there so what you get with this is um just basically the level 
of the parameter. More work needed because there's certainly opportunities to do more than this. And what I'd like to do is integrate um, the, in an ideal world, the um, kind of setup we've got for the Xenology style parameters for the Narration FL key series of keyboards. At the moment, that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use my FL key for doing uh, um, plugins and also effects on the mixer. Um, but that's what that's about. Shift, I think I've shown you already. Um, how to remove markers if we're in pan mode. Um, we can go to somewhere that doesn't have a marker and we can add a marker. We can go somewhere else that doesn't have a marker and we can add a marker. And we can also remove markers. So add and remove markers. Um, the mark button allows you to use the um, drop dial. At the moment, the drop dial just goes backwards and forwards. If you want to jump between your markers, that's what this does. So it's quite handy because you can you can name markers like, I don't know, bridge of song or uh, whatever you want, or a particular um, part of lyrics that you want to jump to all the time. And it's very easy to, to jump to them. And you can, uh, obviously, you can name them whatever you like, but they come up if you're just adding them like this, called auto. Um, and you do at the moment need your mouse and keyboard to rename them. Um, but it's just a question of right massing on them and saying um, rename. Let's call it Bob. And um, generally, when I did look at this, um, it's going to be fairly easy to put the name of the marker coming up on the third level of the display. I haven't done that because I've run out of time. As I said, I did time box myself. Um, and the last one there is an escape key. And that's really about closing any window down um, that comes up um, that you have currently focused. So if I want to close down um, the mixer, say, I've just focused the mixer. There I am closing it down. Let's bring it back with the button. Um, An escape is used um, in several scenarios, perhaps if you bring up a dialogue and you think, oh no, I don't actually want to commit on that dialogue, and it's just easy just to hit escape. So I thought escape was a good one to have on there. And obviously shift is useful as well. Most of these buttons have an alternative um, function that's related to what you can see on the screen uh, when the shift button is pressed. Um, and there's, there's loads of opportunities for shift keys and uh, alt keys, you know, as many different as you like. Um, and it's an alternative to switching between these other screens. So I guess it's probably a balance, really, um, to get to the, um, the right level of um, ease of use, um, ergonomics. Um, do I want to have to go to another screen or do I want it there in the right place? And it's that's where I think I said in the last video, it's very personable, this uh, control service, in so much as you can personalise it to whatever you want it to be. Okay, now the only other thing I was going to mention um, was the uh, there is a bit of software that comes with it, oh, which I thought I had loaded up. I haven't. Um, let me just load that now. P1 Nano name up. Um, so this is the software that allows you to change the functionality. So I thought I'd just very quickly um, run through that. So I'm currently looking at FL Studio because so I've got it set up, all my things as FL Studio. And interestingly, um, no, I'll show you that in a minute. <laughs> I was going to go off, off piste a little bit. Um, so we're currently looking at this green area. And I don't know if that comes up on the screen, but these are the ones that you can see. These are the other ones. And as an example of how you can set these, there's a blank one here we've got on my blue layout, which I think is the first layout. And if I want to, say, make that um, any of these functions, I can just pick them out. So if I wanted it to be, I don't know, um, mark plus, that's going to add remove markers, I think. Then if I now go to the blues, you'll see it's in there. And if I hit click it, I'd expect that marker, auto marker to remove. And sure enough, it is doing. I'm on and off, taking that marker on and off. So that's how you lay things out. Now, um, you only really want to have one function for adding and removing markers, and that's on my green screen. I've called it add and remove markers, I think, didn't I? So when we go to that one, 
you'll notice they're both doing the same thing. One of them is called Mark Plus, and this is where it comes from, the function list. One of them, I've renamed it to Add Remove Markers. If I go over here, nine times out of ten, I can put my name in here, and it will um, sort it. A couple of times, um, I haven't been able to rename them, and I've had to resort to going into the backend XML. It's a little bit dirty, so there's a little bit more work required to um, to make this uh, a little bit more customizable. And the other thing um, you can do, before I, get, before I forget, is the basics is you can move them around. So this is how you decide where you want things to be. And what I'd like to be able to do, which I think I can do sometimes, is take them from some of these others. And most of the time you can do that. Sometimes you can't. So banking select on mode. Yeah, that's working. They're all going to work now if I do this. Anyway, um, this is a download that comes with uh, um, P1 Nano from the uh, ICON website. It's very useful. As I say, it's the way you're going to customize the control surface. Um, in an ideal world, this ties in to um, the back end script. Now, if we take, for example, some of the things I've done, I've got mixer colors here. You see that all, all that the back end of um, the Icon P1 Nano knows about is something called Free4. Behind that, there is a control code. Now, what would be nice is if you could link the configuration files for the P1 Nano to the scripts in FL Studio. Um, I'm going to do that. And when I publish this second version of the script with the stuff I've done over the weekend, I'll also give you um, a file which enables you to, to load my green screen, this one, and the rest of the stuff into... Uh, I mean, I'll do that now for you. So if I load in my P1, which is just what I saved it as, you'll see all those changes I made have gone. And uh, this is what I've got left, which is how I've set it up. And I can save that file and I can call it something else if I want on my file system. Um, I'm not going to do that for now. And uh, I can also save it as a user default, um, which is what I'll do. Save as user default. I haven't actually noticed that before. <laughs> That's useful. And I can lock it so I don't accidentally make changes. OK, um, I think that's everything I, I wanted to cover today. Um, it's a mixed bag. Um, it's a great control surface, uh, nice and compact, I like the design, um, lots of functionality, um, good use of the uh, MCU, the Mackie Control um, uh, customization, which is available. Um, as I said in the last video, we do need uh, MCU 2 from Mackie. I wish they would, um, I wish they would do what they did in the first place, because basically every manufacturer of control surfaces, almost, and almost every manufacturer of doors, owes a massive debt to, to Mackie, which is a company that actually bought out the original control surfaces, which are still around today, and very good. Um, they're quite a premium price. Very solid, big metal devices. Um, if you look back on my on my uh, videos, you'll see um, there's there's two main ones. There's the original one, which is grey, and then there's the second one they brought out, which is silver. As I say, uh, a lot big debt for the industry goes to Mackie when they came out with the uh, Mackie Control Protocol, something like ten years ago now. Um, but yeah, what we really want is the Mackie Control Protocol Part Two. And as I say, Mackie are probably the only company. Maybe Apple could do it. I don't know, but um, other companies have had a go and had limited success. What we really want is a, an industry standard that adopts uh, MIDI 2.0. They're around babbling now. Uh, sorry about that. I hope that's been useful to you. Um, if it has, then uh, please give the video a like. If you want to see more videos like this, then subscribe. Um, thanks very much for your time. Let's call it a day there.